Well, a pleasant good evening. We're here. I'm Dr. Kilafa Kali. Tonight, we're going to have a powerful session. I pray that you join and you share this and be a part of this tonight. I've gone through so much searching the word and so many things. And tonight, we have come to this teaching on the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, the true essence of living. I'm telling you, it's going to be powerful. Let's begin by worshiping. Father, we worship you. We praise you. We adore you. We lift you up. We magnify you for you are indeed worthy of all our praises and our glory and honor. Let's sing a song to him. I sing praises to your name. Oh Lord, praises to your name. Oh Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I sing praises to your name. O Lord, praises to your name. O Lord, for your name is great and greatly One more verse of you there, sing with me. I give honor to your name, O Lord, honor to your name, O Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I give honor to your name, O Lord, honor to your name, O Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we come by the name and the authority of the blood of Jesus, we ask you, Lord, to saturate this place with your wisdom, saturate this place with the revelation of your word. Let everyone who is watching be touched, be healed, be transformed by this word. Everyone who will come on, everyone who will share, may they be blessed. May you be touched. May they be encouraged. But Holy Spirit, most of all, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Let it be established in our mind, our body, our soul, our spirit, our lives. Let your kingdom be established over the nations. Let your kingdom be established over all of the people. And all of the saints, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Let's jump right into it. Uh, this topic came about because I have searched, like I said, every religion. I've searched uh, even church uh, religion. And that's a term in itself. I have uh, pursued so many things. Uh, these are things that the world told us that uh, they, they mean success. The education, the career. Uh, the finances, the, the getting a house, a car, and all of these things, they are good things. <clears throat> but I found they're not the essence of life. Because when it's all said and done, only what we do for Christ will last. We have to dive into eternal things. So tonight, I'm talking about the kingdom of God, the true essence of living. The true essence. And if you're there, Nicole, I see you. Um, um, roll. God bless you, Nicole. Jennifer, Sanch, God bless you, woman of God. Wayne. Well, uh, Wayne Sanchez and Wayne Johnson. Nettie, good to see you all. Just jump on in and continue to share. Corey, God bless you. We have a word. Let's start off with Matthew chapter 6. This has taken me over 15 to 20 years of just studying intently, and I finally got something in my spirit that I want to share. Uh, Jesus himself, and we're going to go back to Jesus. We're going to discuss who and what Jesus said is important, and this is not going to be a traditional message of Shouting and screaming, but I need you on there. I need you sharing. I need you blessing someone before I get into it quickly. God bless you, all of you. All right, so uh, Jesus was asked this question. Let's go to Matthew chapter 6, um, and let's look at what Jesus said. This is written in red, and this is talking about what Jesus is saying, okay? Uh, he's talking to his disciple. Verse 25 of Matthew chapter 6, it says, Therefore, take 
I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment? We can stop right there. I've found so many people uh, in, in, in every area and every field that I'm in and I'm involved in. I'm meeting people daily, every day, and I'm finding that it's the same thing, the same uh, worry. I want to deal with worry, first of all, as we talk about the essence of living. There are so many people burdened with worry. I mean, you spend most of the time getting up in the morning, think about, thinking about what you're going to eat, what you're going to put on. Before it's 10 o'clock, most people are thinking about what's for lunch. You go and search for lunch. Then after that, you're thinking about uh, 2, 3 o'clock, what you're going to cook for dinner, what meal you're going to get, where you're going to buy it at a fast food restaurant place, or you're going to go to a food store. <clears throat> then when you get home, you spend time cooking the meal. After cooking the meal, you spend time uh, cleaning the dishes. You spend time taking out meat for the following day to prepare. And for us with children, it's, it's a continuous thing. And life can just be so involved with just food. Amen? You can spend most of your time thinking about food. Some of you right now probably eating. That's all right. Go ahead and eat. Some of you right now thinking about what's your meal plan in the morning. What are you going to make for breakfast? What are you going to make for lunch? And Jesus here is saying, it's not life more than what you're going to eat. I mean, my God, continue to come on, Gina. Good to see you. Stefan, the preacher, the scientist. God bless you, brother. Um, what you shall drink, then what you should put on. The next part of the day, most people are consuming and I saw this throughout life, the things that burden most persons now is now what you're going to put on. I'm talking about in the morning, you're preparing the night before what you're going to put on. What outfit match with what shoe, what match with what uh, top. Some of you ladies, wonderful, who love that. You, what hat, what shoe, what dress, what outfit. I'm telling you, it's just full of uh, what jewelry matches with it, what makeup. It, it, it's so filled with uh, what you're going to put on. And throughout the day, what, how do you carry yourself? And these are good things. But Jesus is saying that's not the true essence of life. That's not the true fullness of the joy of life that we should have. In fact, what you should eat, what you should drink, and what you wear every day really drives most people. And we have some mental health challenges because people are so preoccupied, kiki, uh, with, with life and with with the things of life and with just living life, they are so overwhelmed and they're so frustrated. I see people every day burdened with the cares of just life, just food and drink, not the bills. We're going to talk about bills later on, but just what you should eat, what you should drink. Jesus, 2,000 years ago, addressed the same mindset, the same type of preachers, Brother Capron, good to see you. Uh, many years ago, it's the same human experience. I'm telling you, whether you're black, you're white, you're Hispanic, you're Asian, you're Indian, you're Middle Easterner, you're South American, there is the, you're European, you're from the Caribbean, the Bahamas, the U.S., I've found that people are still the same and they're all alike wherever they are. It's the same human experience. That's why Jesus, who created all humans, could speak 2,000 years ago to address the cares of life. We sometimes think these are new concerns. Light bill, water bill, Bishop Roberts, good to see you. These are not new experiences. These are what are called human experiences. If you're writing, I want you to write this down. And by the way, I'm going to be dealing with the kingdom of God and the true essence of life over the next few weeks. Stay tuned to pop in. So Matthew 6 uh, and 25, Jesus said, it's not life more than these things. Why, Why are we burdening ourselves with these things? So uh, in verse 26, um, Jesus goes on in verse Ma Matthew chapter 26, 27, 28, talking about why you're taking thought for these things. Don't worry. The animals are taken care of. Don't you know that your Heavenly Father will take care of you, that He loves you, that He's not going to let you be burdened down? Weren't the same bills here last year and the Lord brought you through? Weren't, weren't there the same needs for food and you made it? You're alive today? Didn't He need to heal you last year? Didn't He need to deliver you? And didn't the Lord deliver like He said? Praise God. And we're here. Amen. So Jesus goes on in Matthew chapter 6, verse 31. Good to see you, Patricia, Jean Baptiste. Therefore, take no thought, saying what you should eat or what you should drink or what you should be clothed. For all these things do the Gentiles seek. Oh my goodness. This is a message for uh, persons who are living the life in Christ or supposed to live it. Jesus said, only people who are pagans, who are heathens, 
who don't have covenantal relationship with him, who don't have relationship with him, worry about these things, are concerned about these things, are preoccupied with these things. Well, doctor, pastor, whatever you want to call me tonight, uh, don't, uh, shouldn't I be concerned about this for my wife and my family and my children? Yes, I'm not saying not to be concerned, but Jesus is saying, don't let it consume the very essence of your being. Don't let it pull the very life that you can be enjoying his presence, enjoying your family, enjoying your future, having a mental state that is free. You know, I spent 10 years in psychiatry and still see patients in, 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 um, with many psychiatric things. And that's one of the things I, I want you to know. It's, it's, it's a burden. When you don't have that peace of mind, when you don't have that mental health, when you don't have... Um, that peace to sleep, when you don't have hope for the next day, when you become hopeless and suicidal, and when you become overwhelmed with the cares of life, when you have nowhere to turn or you feel that there's nowhere to turn, it's one of the worst states to be in. You know why? Because with a physical aim, and I can treat hypertension, I can treat diabetes, I can uh, treat a, a pending heart condition, I can treat a wound, we can we, we, we in the medical field can treat diseases that you see, but the disease of the mind, the worry, the fear, the doubt, the oppression of the mind, the dark cloud of depression, the dark cloud of fear, the dark cloud of worry that is internal, that can only be uh, assessed through sometimes just being with the client, the patient, or that loved one. It, it's a more deadly thing, I think, many cases than treating diabetes. Because it can go unknown. And so many, many people, the numbers are staggering. Uh, all around the world, the American Psychiatric Association is showing that depression and mental health illness are, is going to be one of the leading causes of disability and loss of work time in the years to come. We're seeing it now. The big debate is on. The struggle, the battle in the mind. And Jesus is saying, most of it stems right from here. Being overwhelmed with the cares of life. Jesus said, your heavenly father know that you have need of these things. Do you know, I want to encourage someone, do you know that your father, if you have a relationship with him. But the interesting thing about the heavenly father is that he reigns on the just and the, on the undra, unjust. Uh, I, I don't want to be in that category where I'm not certain. <clears throat> but he's such a loving father. Black, white, Asian, or, um, not African, South American, Middle Eastern, uh, European, American, Canadian, Central South America. He loves all and he cares for all. They're all his children. And he cares for them so much that he provides greatly for the needs of those people. And for the whole of creation. But I'm telling you, there's a place where you can become a son of God. There's a place where you have relationship. There's a place where you can come into a certainty that your father will have full responsibilities over you. How do I know that? I'm, I'm glad you asked. Pastor Sands, good to see you. Matthew chapter 6 and 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. That's where we're going to dock on tonight. I'm going to try to cover as much as we can tonight. So <clears throat> Jesus talks about seeking that, the kingdom of God. That word seek comes from a word, Z-E-T-E-O, Z-T-O. It means to require, to demand, to crave, to strive after, to go after passionately. So that word seek is an intentive word. It is a word in which you, you use your full life to pursue and go after. Good to see you, uh, Pastor Lenora Sands, woman of God. Good to see you. It's a passionate pursuit of the things of the Lord. In particular, he's talking about the kingdom of God. Now, let's understand. There's a lot of talks about the kingdom, and I'm so glad about it. Um, the church and the people of God are coming into an understanding of the kingdom of God. It is a place where, my God, I'm going to show you in scriptures about it. Uh, it's a place, a real place. It's a position in Jesus Christ. It's an, uh, we are here physical. And we are physically living in this life and this world, but there is a world in which the laws and the truth of the word of God operates in your life and mind that causes you to live above just an ordinary life while you're in this life. Amen? I'm going to talk about this. 
It's going to take me a few sessions, so stick with me. Come on. If you're there, just shout hallelujah, shout amen. If you're getting this, if you're hearing me, just let me know that you're hearing me. Praise the Lord. Come on in. So let's talk about this kingdom of God. So the kingdom of God is uh, the, the rulership of God in the earth. Now, you're going to hear me talk about two things. One, the kingdom of God. The other, the kingdom of heaven. Now, the kingdom of heaven is a physical, real place called heaven, where God, the, the creator, Elohim, uh, Adonai, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who reveal himself through Jesus Christ lives. He is seated in the heavens. We're going to talk about that. How do I know? Well, let's just jump straight into it right now. Revelation. Let's get our Bibles. Have your Bibles with you. This is not... Uh, I, I'm going to pray and prophesy and minister to some of you afterwards under the anointing by the Holy Spirit. But I'm going to teach first so that we get a, a clear understanding uh, of uh, the Word of God and what we're trying to teach. Revelation chapter 4. Write this down. This talks about the kingdom of heaven. You have to understand. Jesus said to seek the kingdom of God. You, you cannot pursue something you don't know. He didn't say seek the church. He didn't say seek a bishop. I'm telling you, we got all kinds of, you know, pursuing the bishop, pursuing the pastor. That's good. Honor your pastor. Reverence your pastor. I'm a pastor. But I want you to pursue and seek the kingdom of God. That's what Jesus told you to pursue. Amen. And if you don't, I'm sorry, you've used a lot of time pursuing so many things. You could get busy in church and still miss the kingdom. You could be busy doing the work of God and miss Jesus himself. You can miss the king. You can go after seeking the things of the kingdom, the blessings, the benefits, the prosperity, the laws, and forget, hallelujah, that um, you need to pursue the king of the kingdom, who is Jesus Christ. So Revelation chapter 4, let's dive into this. Right now, if you're there, just shout hallelujah. Let me know you're there watching. Share this. I'm going to dive into the kingdom of heaven. Your life is going to be transformed. I'm telling you. I, I praise the Lord. He has set me free in my spirit and my life to live. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. After this, I looked, and behold, a door was open in heaven, <clears throat> and the voice which I heard was as, was as if it were of a trumpet speaking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show you these things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne, and he that sat was to look upon a jasper and a sardine stone, and there was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like unto an emerald. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So John, the very half-brother of Jesus, the last apostle who lived, uh, had a divine encounter, had a revelation of who Jesus was. He had uh, he was taken into heaven, if I were. And in heaven, he saw this beautiful throne. And he that sat upon it was beautiful, like a precious stone. And verse 4 of Revelation 4, And round about the throne were 24 seats. And upon the seats, I saw 24 elders clothed in white raiment. And they had on their heads crowns of gold. Praise God. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunders and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Skip down with me. Come down. And uh, verse 8 and of Revelation 4, verse 8. And the four beasts, and each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within. And they rest on day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And when those beasts gave glory and honor and thanks unto him that sat on the throne who lived forever and ever, the 24 elders fell down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that lived forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure are and were all things created. Praise God. Jump on in here. Good to see you. Ernest, God bless you. Wax, God bless you. Listen here. Uh, as we read Revelation chapter 4, it gives us a wonderful picture. And I want to talk about the kingdom, the essence of living. But before I get that, I'm giving you some history from the book of Revelation. And the devil has fought many believers from reading the book of Revelation. They're too afraid to read it. But the book of Revelation is actually, the term of that book is... The Revelation of Jesus Christ. That's the name of that book. Okay? The Revelation of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. So, now, in Revelation, John is seeing angels worshiping, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. 
the first point I want to bring is that in the kingdom of God, kings, who is Jesus in this case, loves worship. Now, I don't know when we get to heaven, we're going to ask Jesus why. But kings love worship. Uh, the difference with our King Jesus, he doesn't need worship from creation. He doesn't need worship from the angels or humans or these elders or all of creation. The good thing about him, Adonai, Elohim, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is seated on the throne, who is Lord and God forever. Hallelujah. That's what we stand on tonight. But the glorious thing is, he is worshipped all by himself. If no one was to worship Jesus, he would be still king and Lord forever. And by the way, Lord means owner or possessor. The one who owns, possessed, and has complete control of a thing. So, uh, the Bible said the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell in. I want to let the Muslim know, the heathen, um, Hindu, the Buddhist, the atheist, the agnostics. Uh, the unbeliever, the critical, the, 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 the uh, whatever religion, whatever belief, the Buddhist, the uh, Shuntuism, the whatever you call uh, and whoever you follow, that you belong to God. You belong to Jesus. All right? Because the earth belongs to the Lord. The world, everything that exists in it and every human. The difference is not everyone has accepted that Jesus is their Lord or Jesus is their owner. And if you're a believer here today, uh, when you say that Jesus is Lord, that's true. The difference now has to be you and I saying Jesus is my Lord. When you say Jesus is my Lord, what you're doing is saying, Jesus, you own me. You own everything about me. You own my mind. You own my life. You own my family. You own my bank accounts. See? You own the car, the property, the house, the business, the, the, the resources, everything that I own, I don't really own it. You own it, but I'm just being a steward of it. That's the place of the kingdom. Now, if you're not there today, that's what I'm hoping you to get to tonight. Because it means if the Lord is to tell you, give something to someone else, uh, if you feel it's yours, he's not your Lord. If you and I feel like we can do whatever we want to do with our bodies, well... Jesus is not our Lord. He doesn't own us. Uh, so I don't have a struggle with, with sin, really. Because uh, sin says, I am Lord of my own body. But when I live for Jesus Christ, I don't have to argue about smoking, drinking, premarital sex, adultery. It, it doesn't matter because my body doesn't belong to me. This life doesn't belong to me. Come on, help me somebody. I don't get in an argument with folk anymore about doing things. It, it's, I'm beyond that. I understand that Jesus is Lord. And he is Lord of my life. And because he is Lord of my life, I have no control over what I do with my own body. In fact, the Bible said, Know ye not that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit, and that you are not your own. That we are bought with a price through the blood of Jesus. That if we defile our bodies, we shall be destroyed. Why am I talking about that? Because if you're going to live free, if you're going to live free in your mind, if you're going to live free in your life, if you're going to live free from the cares and the burdens and the worries and the fear of life, you have to surrender totally to Jesus and make him Lord. It means I don't worry about what I'm going to drink or eat tomorrow, Ramesh. I'm not going to worry about where money comes from. I'm not going to worry about anything because he is my Lord. Because he owns me, he's responsible for taking care of me. If that's you, shout amen. I hope you're getting this. Come on, come on. Come on, Ramesh, good to see you. Heather, I want you to share this. This is going to free people from the burden of heaviness. I'm telling you, I'm traveling, and people are contacting me, and they're so heavy, they're so burdened, they're so filled with the burden of life because Jesus is truly not their Lord. Now, I want you to know, you can be a Christian, Jesus, you can accept Jesus in your life, and he still not be your Lord. Uh-oh, wow. Okay, think about that for a minute. You could say, Jesus, you are my, I accept you. I'm a born again Christian. I'm living for you. But do you know that many people who say that, they don't surrender their whole life to him. They're still trying to figure this life out. They're wandering through life with burdens and cares and, and the weight of this life. And it's defeating them instead of them having victory 
in Jesus, overcoming power, because not because of who I am, but because I trust in the God that I serve. I trust the one who is my Lord. If he's my Lord, he has to feed me. If he's my Lord, he has to take care of me. If he's my Lord, he has to supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. If he's my Lord, he has to cover me. If he's my Lord, he has to direct me. If he's my Lord, he has to give me the wisdom for the things that I need for this life and my family. If he is my Lord, he is obligated to take care of me. All I have to do is obey him. Say obey. I wish you type obey there. So Revelation, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, seek the kingdom. So I, I took you back to Revelation 4 that talks about, please write these scriptures down, that talks about the kingdom of God and looking at the kingdom of heaven. Heaven is a real place. Hallelujah. Let me just stop there for a minute. Heaven is a real place. The throne of God is there. Those who have died and gone on in Jesus Christ are in glory in heaven. The Bible talks about that. I'm going to share more about that. Those who are in Jesus Christ, if we accept them, let me tell you something. This body might die. This body might perish. Listen to me. If you have Jesus Christ as Lord of your life, he has obligated himself through his word to raise your body up. Oh, my God. The Bible said, blessed are the feet, those who preach the gospel, but also blessed are the, blessed is the saints who die in Christ. I'm telling you, when you, when you have an understanding of your eternal place, when you understand the eternal reward for walking with Jesus Christ, if you were to die in Christ Jesus, him being your Lord, he is not only your Lord in life, but he's Lord even after death. Hallelujah. What does it mean? It means dying in Christ means you're going to raise again. He's going to be Lord over, over, over your new body. He's going to make this old body new. He's going to raise up this old body. He's going to make these bodies new. Death, where is your sting? Grave, where is your victory? They are being swallowed up. And he shall put on ah, corruption. This corruptible body will put on incorruptible flesh. Hallelujah. Praise God. I wish someone would celebrate with me. Man, he has promised us eternal life. He has promised us dominion in this life and after this life eternal life to rule and reign with Christ Jesus in eternity my God man you should be free you and I should be free to live free to live this life without the fear of death the fear of disease the fear of destruction the fear of failure you I want to make a bold statement here you cannot fail with Jesus Christ as your Lord you cannot fail if you obey the laws that are set out to operate in the kingdom of God in this earth, that also will operate in eternity. Hallelujah. Now I'm going to minister to some of you. Get some people on here because this is going deeper. Give me a few more minutes. Let's look now. Uh, we talked about that. Now let's go into understanding some more things about the kingdom. How do we pursue the kingdom? How do we seek after the kingdom? Let's go back to Matthew 6, and then we're going to go through some scriptures in the book of Matthew. Stay on this. In a few minutes, I'm going to be praying for you. I'm going to be praying for the Lord to heal your mind, your body, your life. I'm going to be praying for some of you to enter into the kingdom of God for real and begin to operate in the kingdom of God in this earth. Amen? There's no restriction. We're removing dead religion today, and you and I are coming into the truth of God's kingdom. I want you to share this quickly. I'm going to give you a few more seconds to share because we're going to dive into this. Okay, Matthew 6. We read it already. Let's jump more into this. 6 and 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. The first point I want to talk about, the kingdom of heaven is real. Second, the kingdom of heaven, uh, it's heaven is a real place where Jesus sits upon his throne and he rules. He rules all of eternity. Now, uh, the earth is the Lord, the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell in, everything belongs to the king. He, it belongs to Jesus. Well, pastor, what are we doing with all these churches? Good question. Well, we're trying to get the world to know that they must come into the Lord. They must come into their creator. They must come through Jesus Christ and accept him as Lord. Even though he's Lord, uh, you have to accept him as Lord. All right. That's an interesting concept. He is Lord all by himself, 
But it's not until we accept him as Lord through what he did on the cross in the shedding of his blood, dying and raising from the dead, does he become Lord of our lives. And when we begin to live every day according to his laws and his principles, it is then that we are walking as his children. Now, seek first. The first thing we must seek is the kingdom of God. Well, how do we do that? The first thing, what are you doing tonight? I'm so glad you're on here tonight. It means you have a pursuit for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. You saw the title. You saw this live. I'm only going to be teaching the kingdom of God. Anytime you see me on here, it's the kingdom or something related to the kingdom. You sought the kingdom. You're seeking the kingdom. You're joining the things of the kingdom of God. You have an interest. You have a pursuit. You have a desire to learn more. That's the beginning of it. Seeking first. It means when I get up in the morning, I don't uh, think about what I'm going to eat, what I'm going to drink, and what the day is planned, and what we have planned for the day. The first thing I do is I begin to seek the kingdom. I begin to pursue uh, how can I be a part of the kingdom of Jesus Christ? How can I walk in his kingdom today? How can I expand his kingdom? How can I be an example of his kingdom? And then I'm going to tell you another thing. How do we pray the kingdom? All right? So let's jump into that. So are you with me tonight? Can you hear me? If you can hear me and this is moving, give me a thumbs up. Samantha, good to see you. Ramesh Kumar, good to see you. Just come on in. Jump on in here. All right? In that same chapter, let's go back. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 6 and um, verse 7. But when you pray, use not vain repetition. This is Jesus speaking. We're talking about the kingdom of God. That's our topic tonight. The essence of living. Oh, I'm tired of living a life of fear and death. I'm tired of being burdened. I'm tired of struggling in this life. There must be more to life according to this. And I'm telling you, hallelujah, Jesus, thank you, is seeing this. Jesus has given us the keys. There are some keys locked up in this. And I've spent many years studying it, and I'm going to share it with you. We're going to dive more into this. These are the keys. These are the principles. These are the, the, the mysteries revealed. It took study. It took actively pursuing. I went from Genesis to Revelation studying. By the way, I have a book here. You are my father. I'm your son. Understand the kingdom sonship. I need you to get this on Amazon. Go on and buy this. Share this. Uh, Dr. Kilafo Kali was forwarded by Dr. Miles Monroe, the late Dr. Miles Monroe. I want you to get it. It has so much more in here on the kingdom of God. I spent years researching and studying and pursuing the kingdom of God. I wrote this some uh, 2009, wow, 10 years ago. So I've been actively pursuing the kingdom. I've been actively studying the kingdom of God, and I'm still doing it. All right? Good. So let's get to now what Jesus said. Hallelujah. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, uh, do not, verse 7, but when you pray, use not vain repetition as the heathens do, for they think that they should be heard for their much saying. You know that you can be praying long and hard prayers and still not accessing the power and the principles of God's kingdom? Oh my goodness. And, and you know, I thank God for this platform. And as you go through this, you're going to see so many people. And, I, and I've been reaching out to some of them and saying, my God, what do you believe? What do you stand on? Everyone has a voice now on these platforms. But that's good. Praise God. But I'm concerned about what is the message? Because Jesus left a specific message. He left the message of the kingdom of God. Uh, he didn't left a message for you to just wake up one night and speak something or in the morning and go live. My God, I'm very concerned. Hallelujah. But Jesus told us this is how to pray. I've seen people praying and prophesying. Praise God for them. Good. But I listen to him. They're talking about the kingdom. Because I can prophesy to you and I can pray with you and for you. And then after that, you're going to need something else tomorrow. But if I give you the principles and keys of the kingdom, you could run on in Jesus Christ for the next 50 years of your life. Ah, if I give you the principles of the kingdom, you can have your family successful. If I give you the principles, the mysteries that are locked up in the scripture, the Holy Bible, the, the manual of the kingdom of God and go through the laws and the principles that will work in South Africa, that will work in Namibia, that will work in Zimbabwe, that will work in India, Nepal, it will work in Pakistan, it will work in Indonesia, it will work in Mexico, Myanmar, it will work in China, it will work in New York, the Bahamas. 
It will work everywhere. I can give you the principles of the kingdom and you will forever be blessed. But if I just came on here and prophesied, I know we would have had hundreds of people just on live now. But that's not what God has called me to do in this hour. This is a critical hour. And, and Jesus is coming back. He wants his people to have the fullness of the kingdom. God bless you, Melissa. Uh, uh, he wants uh, Pastor Angelina. God bless you. He wants us to be filled with the knowledge of the kingdom of God. So let's jump into this. Revelation 6 and 8. Be not ye therefore like unto them. For your father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask. Real kingdom living is... I leave my cares to the Lord because I know he's going to take care of everything concerning me. That's number one. That's another nugget. I'm going to just be dropping nuggets. So we looked at kingdom. Now let me backtrack. Number one, we looked at the kingdom of God. We looked at number two, the kingdom of heaven. Number three, you look at worship in heaven. The king is being worshiped. The king is being glorified. He's being exalted. Hallelujah. Bishop Dutton, God bless you in Jesus' name. And, and, and then we look at now seeking the kingdom. The kingdom, the zetio, the pursuit, the craving after Jesus said, seek the kingdom. But not only just seek him regularly, it must be number one in priority. It must be the priority of our life. It must be the priority of our being. God bless you. You, you listen and watch and tune into Dominion TV. Bishop Dutton is a powerful ministry that talks about the kingdom of God. You got to go in there. Presenti, God bless you. Good to see you. Uh, all right. So, so the next point we're looking at is Jesus saying your prayers should not be, you should not be overwhelmed with the things of this life. But after this manner, now this is where it's going to get powerful. Verse 9 of Matthew chapter 6. After this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven. Number one, we looked at Revelation. Hallelujah, chapter 12. And Revelation chapter 4. That looks at heaven and looks at what's going on in heaven. So Jesus, when he said we are to pray, we are to pray from a position of heaven to earth. All right? Many of you are looking at the cares of your life. You're looking at your bank book. You're looking at your experience. You're looking at things going on in your life. You're looking from a place of the earth. You don't look at a place from earth. When you are in the kingdom of God, you pray from heaven. Jesus said, pray our Father which is in heaven. You focus your attention on heaven. Because according to Revelation 4, according to Revelation 12, heaven is glorious. Heaven has worship. The Lord who sits on his throne in heaven is, is full of power and full of authority. And he's seated and he's beautiful and he's glorious. And he rules and reigns from heaven to the earth. A lot of times we are praying from the natural. We are praying from what's happening in our family life. We are praying on what, what is going on in our conditions. We are praying on uh, and, and we're believing and we're looking at the natural life only. But Jesus is saying the first thing you must do, we call it the Lord, our Father prayer. It's, it's not the Lord's prayer. I want to call it the disciples prayer. Because Jesus' disciples came to him and said, Lord, teach us how to pray. So it's really the disciples' prayer. And in this prayer, we pray it all the time, so many times. He's saying, look unto heaven, our Father who is in heaven. Holy is your name. Why did he say holy? Another word for holy is reverence, worship. Because when we worship the Lord Jesus Christ, when we begin to worship him, even in the Lord's prayer, we are doing what's happening in heaven. In heaven, according to Revelation 4, there's worship, there's praise, there's adoration. There, the 24 elders are bowing down and worshiping. They're going on their face. They're casting down their crowns. What is casting down their crowns? They're giving up their authority to the one who has all authority. Jesus is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He is the mighty God. The angels are saying, holy, holy, holy. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. If you're listening, if you would just worship now and cry out holy, you would be bringing the kingdom of heaven into your bedroom, into your home, through these airways. As you worship, the Bible said the Lord inhabits the praises of his people. It means when you worship, you can bring the presence of the king to your life and also all of the blessings of his kingdom. What does the king come with? Well, everything that's in heaven right now, according to Revelation 4, Revelation 12, Revelation 18, everything that's in heaven, when you worship, you can bring to you. Hallelujah. In the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. There is peace that surpasses all understanding. There's joy unspeakable. There is the Lord, the eye of the Lord, the Bible said. The eye of the Lord searches to and fro in all of the earth, seeking for worshipers. 
I'm telling you, Jesus has given us the principles to living the true essence of life in, Rev in Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. And it starts off with worship. You don't start off by what you're going to eat. And Lord, I need you to bless me. And Lord, I need you to feed me. I need you to clothe me. I need you to do... No, Jesus said, hold on, hold on, hold on. I know you have need of all those things. I told you that before. The heathens seek after those things. They pursue those things. Uh, they're concerned about what they're going to eat, what they're going to drink, what they're going to wear. Jesus said, I know you have need of these things. I know you know those things are needed. You're going to need them every day as long as you live. You're going to need them. We're going to need them for our families and our children. Every day we're going to need them. So when we put that aside, we come into true kingdom living. Because kingdom living is, my priority is, I'm going to worship the king. Thank you. The next thing is Matthew chapter 6. Hallowed be thy name. It talks about worshiping. You can't follow a king that you don't honor. You have to honor Jesus as king. Now I'm going to say some things tonight. I, I've grown up in the church. I know Jesus as savior. I know him as Lord. I know him as healer and a deliverer. He's been my doctor. He's been my lawyer. He's been my protector. He's been all those things. But do you know the position that Jesus will be for eternity is king? Do you know when this earth is all passed away and he comes to rule and reign, you're not going to need him anymore to be your healer? You're not going to need Jesus anymore to be your deliverer, your protector, your provider? My God, I'm saying some stuff. I know. Think about it. You know there are going to be bishop, this wonderful man of God. There's going to be no more apostles, prophets, pastors, evangelists, teachers. There's going to be no more prophetic word to give to you. When Jesus comes, he will be established. And what will he be? He's forever our high priest. He's forever the bishop of our soul. He's forever our chief apostle. But he's forever our king. Hallelujah. The position that Jesus will hold in all of eternity, before and after, is king. How do I know? I'm glad you asked me. I'm going to show you everything in the Word of God. Let's turn to Revelation, I'm sorry, the book of Psalm, chapter 145. I love it. Keep joining, keep joining, keep joining, keep joining. Ah, ah, I love that. Yes, until everything be fulfilled. We're going to walk in some stuff here. But let's look at this. Uh, Psalm chapter 145, verse 1. David was a king. He understood kingdom. And that's why you see in the book of Psalm, you'll see more references to the king and the kingdom and the prophetic understanding of who Jesus is uh, more than any other verse that you can imagine. Psalm 145, verse 1. I will extol thee, my God, O king, and I will bless thy name forever. David was a king, but he was worshiping a king. Every day will I bless thee, and I will praise thy name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised and his greatness is unsearchable. Now watch this. Verse 10, Psalm, the book of Psalm 145, verse 10. All thy works shall praise thee, O Lord, and thy saints shall bless thee. You hear that? Everyone who is a true saint of God must be a worshiper, must be a worshiper, must be a worshiper, must worship, must praise, must worship, must give glory and honor to the Lord. If you're in the kingdom of God, you're a worshiper. You're not a complainer. I'm tired of Christians complaining. You must be a worshiper. You must worship the king. Every day, the Bible says, all his saints worship. All they do is worship. Are you a saint? If you're a saint, give me a thumbs up. Give me an amen. Give me something. Let me know you're watching their favor. God bless you. Hallelujah. Worship. Okay? Now, verse 11. They shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom. Who shall speak of the glory of the kingdom? Thy saints and talk of thy power. Listen here. If you are truly living the life of essence, you know that I, let me give my own testimony. Since I've started studying the kingdom, teaching the kingdom, preaching the kingdom, sharing the kingdom. Oh my God, my life has been free. I am free. I am free. I am free. Well, pastor, do things come and affect you sometime? Yeah, but I'm free in Jesus name. Hallelujah. I'm not worried. Hey, I don't get, you see, I don't get wrinkled with life. I don't get burdened with life. I don't get frustrated with life. 
Why? Because I'm, I'm kingdom focused. I talk about the kingdom morning, noon, and night. I talk about the glorious work of the king. I talk about Jesus, the king, every day, all day, as much as I can. I talk about his kingdom. I talk about his love, his power, his rulership. I talk about how he can heal the cold. I talk about how he can deliver. I talk about how he can set free. I talk about his blood. I talk about his kingdom to come. I talk about his rulership in my life and in all the earth. I don't care what's going on in the news. I don't care what's happening. Hallelujah. I talk about the kingdom of God. And when I take the focus of my life, my concern, and my needs, and I begin to talk about the king and his kingdom, he starts adding stuff to me. He starts blessing. He starts adding favor. He said he's going to do it. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things shall be added unto you. Let me suggest to you tonight, hold your hand in Psalm 145. If you are not having things added to your life, extend it to your life, it's more than likely you're not talking about the kingdom, you're not living the kingdom, you're not sharing the kingdom, and you're not walking in the kingdom. Oh my goodness, pastor, doctor, ah, oh, that's a hard word. Well, Liberia, God bless you, you're watching. Pastor Favor from Liberia, West Africa. If you're not seeking the kingdom, talking about the kingdom, sharing the kingdom, excited about the kingdom of God, if you spend most of your time just worried and burdened and concerning about concern about the things of life and other things going on, and you, you're not walking in the kingdom of God, well, let me tell you what. Ah, Norma, I like that. You talk about the kingdom of God every day. Praise the Lord. Keep telling the world. Hallelujah. The Bible said, go ye into all the world and preach to every creature. I'm talking to some of you pastors and preachers. What are you preaching? What is your message? Love is good. Favor is good. I'm going to get a blessing. That's good. It's all. Most of these teaching now are so centered on, 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 on self. It's not expanding the kingdom of Jesus in the earth. Jesus could have invaded the earth already. Nations are still untouched. Countries are still untouched. But most of the gospel is human-centered. It is fleshly. It's self-centered. What I can get, bless me, favor me, prophesy to me, speak a word to me, give me a breakthrough, give me a blessing. All of it is just centered around self, 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 self. When are we going to come out of this self? When are we going to come into this place where we uh, start focusing on Jesus? What do you want? How do you want your kingdom to expand in the Bahamas, in, in Canada, in Australia? How can I be a part of getting your, your kingdom into Nigeria and South Africa? How can I bring people into the salvation knowledge of Jesus Christ and begin to live the life of Christ? How do I get my nation and my governmental leaders to institute laws that operate in kingdom? How do I get the laws of the kingdom of God operating in medicine? In, in technology, in the police force, in the military, in nursing, in business. How do I run my life with kingdom principles? How do I run my business with the principles of the word of God that relates to the kingdom so that everything I do, people can see, feel, and touch the kingdom of God in your life and mine. Praise God. That if I don't get another car, if I don't get a prophetic word about a house, if I don't get a prophetic word about Oh my God, something happening. And oh my God, come on, let's take it up higher. We have a world to reach and tell about the, the entrance of God's kingdom to the earth, and it's coming and it's going to happen. We ought to be the agents of bringing this message. And so, David, back almost four to five thousand years ago, talked about it, and he said, All thy saints shall speak of thy kingdom. Turn your Bibles to Psalm 145. We're going through scriptures. I'm only going to deal with scriptures. Hallelujah. I'm not going to be talking all this other stuff. I'm tired of the prophetic words just for people to feel good to follow you. I don't want just a following on here. I want serious people who want to dive into the scriptures. Because I'm tired of living a life where I'm burdened and worried about what's going to happen tomorrow. But with the kingdom, my spirit is settled. I serve the living king. If he doesn't do anything else for me in his life, if I'm walking in the kingdom of God, I have eternal life. I could go in the food store with $10 and know I'm walking with eternal life. Hallelujah. He's obligated to take care of me, so I don't know how he's going to do it, when he's going to do it, how he's going to do it. I'm obligated, according to his word, to talk about his kingdom, to make his 
kingdom known to the world, and he's mm -hmm. obligated to take care of me. That's the relationship. Come on. But if you want to take care of your own needs, then the Lord is stepping out. He, he has no way to show himself as God and glorious. He has no way of showing himself as your king, your provider, your leader. Hallelujah. Praise God. Psalm 140. I'm getting excited here. If you're getting excited, just shout hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. We're going to wrap this up in a few minutes, but I want to take a few more minutes to just get in this. Hallelujah. This kingdom teaching. Psalm 145. If you have it there, turn with it quickly. Get your Bible. When I come on, get your Bible. Follow me with your Bible because I don't want, no, it's no time for you to just listen to folk who just babbling stuff without the word. You need the word of God. There's too many people on these platforms just talking their own ideas and getting people more confused than ever before. Praise God. Show me it in the word. If you don't speak the word, pastors, leaders, saints of God, I, I can't follow it. My life is too precious to leave to just some prophetic word alone. Prophesy to me, but show me the word of God. So when you're not online, I got the word to stand forever. Amen. Is that somebody out there? Psalm 145, verse 11. The saints, they shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom. Now the word glory means the riches, the splendor, the beauty, the magnificence, the awesomeness. That's what that means. And that's what we should be talking about. So tomorrow you, have, you and I have a task starting from the night. Load up this Facebook, load up the numbers, call everyone you know and you can think of and you can see and tell them about the kingdom of God and watch God move in your life and mine tonight. Anytime I have a need, I just start telling people about the kingdom. Hey, God is in charge. Jesus is Lord. He is king. He rules, honey. He's going to take care of you. He's going to move in your life. Just seek him. Just worship the king. Turn off the TV. Turn off the phone. Lay on your face and worship the king. And as you, if you, as you worship him, get ready to see him move on your behalf. Amen. Hallelujah. If there's something in your life that needs to line up with his kingdom, just do it. You don't have time. I've talked to too many people. Yeah, they tell me, yeah, I know what the word said, but I'm going to still live my life. It's hard. Hallelujah. It's easy. It's easy to say, devil, I'm finished with this relationship. It's not bringing me any um, life in Christ. In fact, it's sucking my life out. Can I talk to somebody? Some of you, I'm prophesying now. Somebody's in some relationship. It's sucking the life out of you. Hallelujah. You don't need that. You, you give that up for the kingdom of God. Some of you in some in, um, arrangements with some people, you need to get out of that. Hallelujah. You don't, have, you don't have time to be tied up in the devil's kingdom. And by the way, there's no middle ground. I hear a lot of people say, oh, my friend is good. I'm good. There's no goodness. There's two kingdoms, the kingdom of Jesus Christ and the kingdom of Satan. I'm not going to deal with the kingdom of Satan now, but you and I know which kingdom we operate and live from. Hallelujah. Or at least we should know. So, how do I know what part of the kingdom I'm in? Psalm 45. Let's come back with me. Let me wrap this up. <clears throat> they shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom and talk of thy power. To make known to the sons of man his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. Verse 13. This is the point I want to emphasize. Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and thy dominion endureth throughout all generations. Praise the Lord. Psalm 145, 13. Let me stay on that for a little bit. I'm going to probably uh, close on this, and you got to look out, um, oh, my God, uh, for another message a little later on. I might give you one or two more verses. But Psalm, in the book of Psalm, David is saying, the kingdom of God is everlasting. That's my point. How long is everlasting? Can anyone tell me? Everlasting is eternal forever. All right. When did it begin? There was no beginning. There's no middle. There's no end. The kingdom of a God through Jesus Christ exists for all eternity. It's never going to start and or finish. I want you to get that. I want you to get that. It means before I was born, the kingdom existed. Be Let me put it this way. Before the earth was created, the kingdom of God existed. His, he was Lord and God all but for himself. Let's go way back to the beginning. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. That's it, Nicole, forever and ever. Let's go back to the beginning. Before the heavens and earth were created, Jesus was Lord and God and sat upon the throne and his kingdom was in existence. Then he created the heavens and earth and made the angels and all those other things and made the earth and made humans. That's why the kingdom of God will never be human-centered. Oh, my goodness. It means in our lifetime, hallelujah, watch what David says. 
Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and thy dominion endureth throughout all generations. Before my great, 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 great grandparents, the kingdom existed. They're gone. We're here. The kingdom is still existing. That means we could either become a part of the kingdom or not. Uh, if the Lord tarries, we'll be dead and gone, and the kingdom, another generation, will rise up, and God's kingdom will still exist. That's why, hallelujah, all of these other religions that are trying to rise up, I'm sorry for them. I want you to tell them and let them know the kingdom of God will never end. No matter what they try to do to the body of Christ or to the church, they are persecuting them in Asia and Africa. People are dying for the gospel of Jesus Christ. But the kingdom of God will never end. The Islam, the Hindu, the Buddhist, the Muslim, whatever, is going to end. But Jesus' kingdom will endure forever. Praise the Lord. Liberalism is going to end. Communism is going to end. Socialism is going to end. Everything that man created is going to end. The riches that people have is going to come and go. Where is all the gold that was here 2,000 years ago? It's still here. Amen. Praise God. Whatever we have, houses, land, property, money, hallelujah, in the next 50 years. And that, let me put it this way. Some of us are going to live up to 50 years. In the next 100 years, where is it going to be? Right here in the earth. If Jesus doesn't come, we'll be dead and gone, and the wealth will still be here. The gold, the silver, the, the trees, hallelujah, the new cars, new technology. What am I saying? The kingdom is everlasting. We can never stop the kingdom of God. But we can be a part of it. Hallelujah. We can be part of something that is never shaken. Satan hates this message of the kingdom. Share this. Share this. Satan doesn't want people to come into the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Satan end is coming. Do you know that? Satan has an end. And he will be cast in the lake of fire. He will be destroyed for all eternity. Uh, he will be thrown in the bottomless pit. Him and every demon and devil. They're coming to an end. And Jesus' kingdom will continue to expand forever. Praise God. I am so happy. You who are saved tonight. Oh God, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to. I'm going to close on that. And let me pray and minister to some of you here. I'm so glad tonight I give the Lord praise. I thank him for his blood. I thank him for the cross. I thank him for dying and shedding his blood and coming into my heart and to yours. If you know him as Lord tonight, I want you to not only know him as Lord, but I want you to step into making him completely Lord of your life tonight. Do not go to bed living your own life. Do not go to bed thinking about how you're going to make it through another year. Don't go to bed thinking about how you're going to protect yourselves. Oh my goodness. We spend the other time just thinking about how we're going to protect ourselves. But David said that God's kingdom is everlasting. And if you jump a part of the kingdom of God through accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, how do you do that? By saying, Lord, I receive what you did on Calvary's cross. I receive the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. And I come into the kingdom of God and I'm going to walk according to your laws and your statutes in this word. Let me tell you something. You are going to be eternally, eternally blessed. My God, you're going to be blessed. That's all you have to do to walk in it. It's that simple. And from there, every day, I'm going to give you the last principle. Jesus said to pray, our Father who art in heaven. Let's turn back to Matthew chapter 6. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Let's say this prayer. Our Father, Matthew 6 and 9. After this manner, therefore pray ye. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. God bless you, Annie Tracy. God bless you in Jesus' name. Uh, 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 thy kingdom come. Thy will be done as it, in as it is in heaven. The kingdom of God. See, that? that's the essence of life. Okay? What is the essence of life? Praying the kingdom of God. You don't need anything else in this life. Pray the kingdom. I'm going to say it again. If I get nothing else in this life, I could be a part of expanding the kingdom wherever I am. You could be a part of expanding. You don't need to be in a pulpit. You don't need to be uh, 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 in some stadium. Right where you are, you can pray God's kingdom and usher God's kingdom in the earth and be just as effective as the person in the pulpit. 
That's the time we're living in. We're living in a time when God is activating every believer who comes into the knowledge of God's kingdom, who has put aside every desire. They're coming into the truth of God's kingdom. And this kingdom is making you impact nations. With the kingdom of God, you can impact nations. You can impact cities. How do I do that? When I get up in the morning right now, in fact, we can do it right now. Just pray with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. As it is in heaven, so let it be in the earth. We looked at Revelation 4. We saw what's happening in heaven. Jesus wants that to come to the earth. He doesn't want religion. He doesn't want churchiness. All the churchiness is going to fade away. All this stuff, house, car, money, things, possession, all this education, degrees, uh, pursuit, business, all this stuff. You, and then when you get it, you realize it's nothing because you're going to need it tomorrow. When you get the money today, you're going to need more next month. When you get the food today, you're going to need it next week. When you get another vehicle, you're going to need one next year. When you buy stuff now, you're going to need new stuff next year. When you buy clothes, you're going to need new ones in the Christmas. Life is, keep, is revolving. And if you get into that cycle of life, you're going to be swept away because your focus is going to be the cares of this life. And you're going to struggle and you're going to be defeated and you're going to feel empty and hopeless and never fulfilled. But if you come into place of the kingdom of God, that I am a part of the kingdom through Jesus Christ. And my next priority, the first thing Jesus tells us to do is not to ask for and uh, give us this day our daily bread. Before he said that, he said, he wants us praying the kingdom of God. He wants us praying that his rulership come into our lives. How do I do it? First thing I say, Lord, let your kingdom come into my mind. Lord, let your kingdom come into my heart. Let your kingdom come into my physical being. Let your kingdom come into everything concerning my life. I list it off. Lord, rule in that area. Take possession in that area. Oh, over my family, let your kingdom rule. Let your power reign. Oh, oh, over everything, everything. I begin to say it. Then I begin to say, Lord, let your kingdom go over this nation. And the Lord began to have me pray over nations. And I begin to say, Lord, rule in those nations. Take authority in those nations. In these governments, in these systems, let your power come. You can pray the same way and see things happen in your life. You can pray the kingdom of God. He said, if you seek the kingdom, all these things shall be added. I guarantee you, I begin to pray the kingdom and I don't worry about anything. Things just get added. Things just come. I don't pray for things anymore. I don't pursue things. I don't ask for things. God just blesses. He just releases stuff to me. I get calls every day with God just releasing stuff. Why? Because I'm talking about the kingdom every day. I'm telling others about the kingdom of God. I'm getting other people saved and coming into the kingdom of God and living that kingdom life. I'm getting other people to pray God's kingdom consistently every day. Hallelujah. So, hallelujah. It says, uh, uh, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Bring in heaven to earth. Bring heaven into your house. Bring heaven into your church. Bring heaven into your community. Bring heaven into your family. Release heaven on everything that relates to you. Then verse 11 says in Matthew 6, Give us this day our daily bread. One short verse. Yeah, he knows you're going to still ask him for things. You could ask him for that. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Forgive this. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And it comes back again. For thine is the kingdom. And the power and the glory forever. That's the eternity of the kingdom of God. When we come back to the end of the Lord's prayer, we call it. It's still declaring. We say it so fast. We don't take time and break it down. He said, hey, listen here. For yours is the kingdom. That's a powerful declaration. When you pray that tonight with meaning, I want you to say with an understanding tonight. Lord, all the kingdoms belong to you. Doesn't matter what the devil is doing. Doesn't matter what it looks like. All of the kingdom belongs to God. All of the power. If he has all of the power, how much is Satan have? Zero. Only what people give him. Thine is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory. Three things. Kingdom. It's saying, Jesus, you have all the kingdoms. Everything belongs to you. All of the power that exists. Now, power is two words. One is dunamis power which is the power for supernatural miracles. So when we believe people for healing, I know people can get healed. I know people can get delivered. We see it. We see demons cast out. We see people healed. We see the supernatural. Why? Because all of that power is his. It's called the dunamis, the dynamite power of God. Hallelujah. It's going to happen because that belongs to him. So when we pray, we pray with an understanding that he has the power to do all of this. So 
When we pray tonight, it's settled. I'm going to pray over some of you tonight. I'm going to release the kingdom of God and the power of God over your life tonight. That's the power of God. The other name for power is exousia. It means delegated power. <clears throat> it means the Lord has delegated power. He's given us another word for that is authority. You have authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all power of the enemy. You and I have power in the name of Jesus to overcome life. We have power to, to live above. We have power to live the Zoe life, the abundant life. We are seated in heavenly places. We are far above principalities and powers. We are seated with Christ Jesus. We sit with Christ. We rule with Christ. We reign with Christ. We sit with him. That's the uh, delegated power. It means we rule with him. We live with him. We walk with him. We talk with him. So when we show up, the glory shows up. When we show up, the power shows up. Hallelujah. When, when, when we come in a place, that he, he shows up. We are there. Wherever we show up with his power, that's where he manifests. We have authority in Jesus' name to go wherever he sends us and to see his power demonstrated. Wherever we show up, demons have to flee. Wherever we show up, the power of God is made known. Wherever we show up, people get saved, healed, delivered, and set free. Wherever we show up, fear is destroyed. Doubt is destroyed. Death is destroyed. Wherever we show up in Jesus' name, we have power. Delegated power. We've been sent as his representative in the earth. Amen. Then, thy is the glory. Amen. Glory means the beauty, the splendor, the magnificence. I'm telling you, when you walk in the kingdom of God, he'll make you look beautiful. Praise God. I mean, he will, he will keep you at peace. Amen. I'm telling you, he won't, you won't be weary. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. You won't be weary and burnt down and bogged down with life. Hallelujah. When you walk with God, the glory of God will be with you. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory. And you walk in the kingdom of God, the glory of God will rest upon you. Some of you are so beautiful now, it's the glory of God. If you step out of Jesus Christ, you will be destroyed. You will age and you will be just break down quickly. Amen. But when you have the glory of God, it's the magnificence, it's the glory, it's the splendor, the beauty, the awesomeness, the, the essence of God is his glory. He is his glory. He is the glory. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, I'm going to begin to pray for you. Thank you for listening and watching. Please continue to go back. You're going to have to go back and grab this. It's going to take some time. You're going to have to go back and digest all of this. Kalisha, good to see you. God bless you. Share this with the loved ones and family. Eat this up. Hallelujah. Anita, Kali Pratt, good to see you. Go back and digest this. I'm going to pray. Shalewa, God bless you, prophetess. My darling wife on here praying. That's right. Watch more of this on powerandglorytv.tv. Power and glory. It's right there. <clears throat> Shalei will put it there. We have tons of kingdom messages. I will be back again as the Lord leads. I'll send notices. It's more than likely going to be on Thursday nights. But look out for other times when we're going to do it. Let me pray for you. If you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord, you need to come into a saving knowledge of who Jesus is. I'm tired of dead religion. I'm tired of churchiness. I'm just tired of casual Christianity. I'm tired of being in the world. I'm tired of being lost. I want the true essence of living. And I found the true essence of living is living in the life of Jesus Christ. And that means I must accept him as Lord. How do I do it? I said, Lord, if you're listening to me, repeat after me. If you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord... I don't care if you go to church, your mama went to church, your mother, your father's a pastor. That I've met many people like that and are lost. Hallelujah. I want you to make a decision tonight for sure if you know him as Lord. You might know him as Savior. He might have healed your body before. But do you know him as Lord? Tonight, when you make this commitment of him being your Lord, he rules everything. When I'm at work, I'm mindful that he owns me. I can't just do anything I have to do it according to his word. When no one's looking and no one's walking and I'm, I'm, I'm doing, going about from day to day, I'm mindful that I have a king that I'm obligated to. That's kingdom living. Whatever I do, I do it as unto the king that I serve. He is the one that will reward and bless you. And he's also the one that will punish me or you secretly and publicly. He's a righteous God. If you come into his righteousness, you'll be blessed. If you don't, you're going to pay the penalty. And if you're paying the penalty now, that's all right. You can ask him for forgiveness. He said, if you come to him, 
He is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. The Lord is faithful. And with that, he can remove everything that you and I ever did. If you need that tonight, you say, Lord Jesus, I believe this word tonight that you died on the cross, shed your blood for my sins. Tonight, I believe you died, rose from the dead, and you were seated on your throne in heaven, ruling from heaven, waiting to come back to completely rule the earth so that heaven and earth and all of creation can be ruled by you, Lord Jesus. Tonight, say this tonight, I believe that I accept you into my life, Lord Jesus. I want you to be my king and my Lord. The word Lord means owner. You now own me. I have, from tonight, I have nothing to do with my life. I totally surrender that to you. My God, that's a very hard thing, but it's easy. But it's a very real thing. If that's you tonight, praise God. If you've said that prayer, you are now in the kingdom of God. Find a Bible-believing church where they're teaching the word of God and operating in the principles of this word of God called the Bible. Study it from Genesis to Revelation. Google it. Go into some of your apps and put in kingdom of God and study everything about the kingdom of God. Read Matthew chapter 6 again tonight, the whole chapter, and Revelation chapter 4. Let me pray for some of you. Some of you right now have been struggling with the cares of this life. I want to pray. If you know anyone else who needs prayer, go turn them in now. Tune them in now. Tell them, come on now. There is an anointing on me right now that is very heavy for deliverance and for the power of the kingdom of God to be demonstrated. Not for who I am, but before, because we serve the king. And I've said the message of the kingdom. I wish I had time. Everywhere that miracles showed up, Jesus taught on the kingdom first. Oh my God, I wish I had time. I wish I had time. Uh, let me give you a few chapters, a few verses, quickly, quickly. Matthew 4, 12 to 17. Um, darling, if you're on, just type this in so the people of God can see this. Uh, Matthew 4, 12 to 17. Matthew 4 and 23. Matthew 7 and 28. Matthew 8, 3 to 4. Matthew 14. Can I say that again? Matthew 4, 12. Matthew 4, 23. Matthew 7, 28. Matthew 8, 34. Hallelujah. And then we can go in the book of Luke. Everywhere. The Bible said, and Jesus taught and preached the kingdom of God. Then he healed the sick, cast out devils, and demonstrated the power of God. Because the kingdom of God must be preached with power and authority and then deliverance of the supernatural. And the power of God is going to hit people's lives. I'm going to pray over some of you. If you believe in God by faith, whatever your needs are, put it there right now. The kingdom people are all on here by faith. We know Jesus is Lord and he has power. You have made him your Lord. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Believe that and go into that. Praise the Lord. I'm going to give you just 30 seconds to put your prayer requests as we stand in prayer with you tonight. Uh, and I'm, as the Lord releases my spirit, I'm going to release some prophetic things. Hallelujah. Patrice, good to see you. God bless you. Mighty woman of God, my good friend from Lee, Lee, Lee College. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Uh, Gopal Singh, God bless you. Uh, India, Nepal, <clears throat> Pakistan, God bless you. Namibia, Zambia, God bless you. United States of America, God bless you. Hallelujah. Nassau, good to see you. Fanita, God bless you. Hallelujah. Let those prayer requests come in quickly, 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 <clears throat> quickly, quickly, quickly. Type them out. If you're not uh, willing to do that, just stand in agreement with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that you have said, hallelujah, we are to seek the kingdom of God and your righteousness. I declare now the kingdom of God rule in this group right now. Everyone listening and watching, I declare the kingdom of God comes upon you with power. That the supernatural kingdom of God rules in your life. I pray right now as you enter the kingdom of God through Jesus Christ, that your faith comes alive, that you trust. Yes, I see it. We're praying, Lord God, even as your people come right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for Bonita. I thank you for finances. Even as she seeks your kingdom, you said all things shall be added unto you. I come in agreement with Vanita. What Vanita, Lord said that he's going to turn some situation around. I want you to seek him tonight like never before. Just lay out on your face before the Lord tonight. Cut everything out. Seek him. Let him be the priority of your heart over the next 24 hours, Vanita. And watch Lord. He's going to break some things. There's some things the Lord wants you to tell him about. He knows it already, but he wants you to confess it. There's some people, hallelujah, you're going to have to forgive 
tonight. I know it. I'm telling you, praise God. Don't get offended with it. He wants you. It's some people he's going to have you forgive. And he's going to have some people. Hallelujah. Forgive you. And you're going to release them. And you're going to see the Lord break through in your life. I declare the kingdom of the Lord over you. Nicole, even in your kidneys and in your physical body and health. I thank you, Lord, for the kingdom of God. Woman of God, as you trust the king. He is an eternal king. There, He is outside of time. He is outside of sickness. He is outside of disease. He, he is outside of everything. He is king even over sickness. Hallelujah. That's why cancer, kidney disease, diabetes, hypertension. Jesus is Lord over all of them. You know what that means? If you own something, you can keep it or throw it away. So Jesus could take cancer out of your body. Some of you right now and throw it away because he's Lord. He can tell cancer, go, try up, move. He can tell kidneys, restart. He can tell a heart that is, uh, stop it, restart. Praise God. My God. Get a little excited here. He can tell a heart, restart. My God. He can tell an organ to refunction. That's the power that he has. Amen. Salvation of family. Some of you believe in God for family. The Bible said, pray that the Lord of the harvest will send laborers. Lord, I thank you that you're sending laborers right now for the healing and salvation of Norma. And Heather for her son's deliverance. Lord, send a deliverer. Send a power tonight. Quicken the Holy, Holy Spirit. Quicken them right now. Let those people right now, wherever they are, in the prison, wherever they are, in the drug house, in the cocaine house, and with a lover they shouldn't be with. Hallelujah. In the arms of the wrong person. Lord God, wherever they are in the club. Uh, hey, Lord God, wherever they are lost. I'm praying for sons and daughters. Lord, let the Holy Ghost power convict them by the prayer of agreement in the name of Jesus. Because you wish that none should perish and all should come to everlasting life. I pray that the kingdom of God comes upon them tonight. And they realize that you are king and lord of their life. And because you are lord, the drinking, they could throw away the drinking. They could throw away the shacking up. They could throw away the adultery. They could throw away all these things that uh, uh, keep them entangled in the kingdom of darkness. Lord, I pray that they come into the kingdom of light. Hallelujah. Everyone on this page, I declare you come into the kingdom of light. That your family come into the kingdom of light. That you rule in the kingdom of light. Get out of darkness. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. And I pray those who are on this page who need strength to come out of darkness. Because I know how darkness is. The kingdom of darkness ruled by Satan. He wants to take you to hell. He wants to take you to his eternal punishment. That is his eternal punishment. He doesn't want you to see light. So he's going to wrap you up. He's going to have people tie you up, give you money, and you're going to feel you don't have the strength to get out of that relationship. Get out tonight in Jesus' name. You're going to feel that you can't stop clubbing. You're going to feel that you can't st stop pornography. You're going to feel that you can't stop sex. You're going to feel that you can, but the power of the kingdom of God will break it off your life because Jesus said, all power has been given unto me in heaven and earth. Jesus has all power. You just have to let him come into your life. Let him come in. And let me tell you something. Whatever his words say, do, do. If he said, uh, 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 cut it off. Your body is the temple of the Lord. Anything that violates his word, you got to cut off immediately. Let me tell you now, these kingdom prayers are not going to work if you're going to stay in the same way. You got to cut some things out of your life. You got to get rid of some things in your life. God bless you, Deborah. You got, you got to obey it. Oh, my God. You got to obey it. This phone is, thank you, dropping all over the place. Hallelujah. You, you got to drop some stuff. The devil don't want us to say this tonight, but I'm going to say this. And I'm going to pray a little bit more. Hallelujah. Are you there praying with me? Praise God. My God. You, you got to get rid of some stuff tonight. Come on. I'm going to give you 30 seconds just to pray. Hallelujah. And I'm going to pray with you before I close out. My God. My phone is just, this is awesome tonight. I want you to pray. I want you to pray. <clears throat> I want you to pray. I want you to pray in Jesus' name. Come on, everyone on this page. I'm not going to just be praying. You have power. You have authority. Come in agreement with me as we pray for saints on this page. Get some pink saints on this page. I'm going to take five more minutes just to pray and prophesy as the Lord will give me the utterance. Go ahead. Add some people on. Tell them get on now. Everyone who's on this page, I need you praying. Pray. Come on, break it, Lord. Father, I thank you that your power is moving. I thank you for the blood of Jesus. I thank you for the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus that gives strength. The name of Jesus that gives power. The name of Jesus that has all authority. Demons tremble at the name of Jesus. 
Darkness flee at the name of Jesus. I speak peace to your mind. Holly, oh God, I speak suicide is broken. I speak the care of life. Suicide is broken. I speak suicide. My God, gunman, I say, put that gun down in the name of Jesus. Whatever plot the enemy had with a gunman tonight, I break it in the name of Jesus. You will be exposed. You will be exposed. Hallelujah, that robbery, we're canceling it right now of that fast food restaurant. I cancel it in the mighty name of Jesus. You're going to hear about it. We break it right now. Hallelujah. That wall you're about to jump. I see it in the spirit. I break it now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I, oh God, the Lord has given me a word of knowledge. Someone is right now on the edge of a canal, an edge of a bridge. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I break it. I say, Lord, send your angel right now to pull them off of that bridge uh, without causing them to drive over it. In the name of Jesus, I take authority over our nation right now and I declare on every corner, every city, every post the blood of Jesus. I declare this nation is under the kingdom of the Lord Jesus. If I have some witnesses, just pray with me. I pray now this nation is under the rulership of the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. I declare the righteousness of God rules in this nation. The power of God rules in this nation. I declare over every church, every pastor, every minister, I remove dead religion, false teaching and I declare the truth of the word of God go forth. Lord, I thank you the Lord has put in my heart he's going to break dead religion off of the nation in the name of Jesus. I declare right now that the truth, that the leaders rise up and begin to teach truth, begin to demonstrate the power of God so that people can come into the knowledge of Christ. I break dark religion. I break false apostles and prophets who are rising up and deceiving God's people and withholding them, holding them. The Bible said they're not coming into the kingdom and they're preventing people from coming. I pray, Lord, that that's broken. I pray that every lying prophet, every lying man, minister that's on the social media be broken in the name of Jesus cancel them let them not be fall God your people let your people not follow them in the name of Jesus you said my sheep know my voice and will answer not to another in the name of Jesus ah my sheep know my voice my sheep know my voice my sheep know my voice thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord my God Hallelujah. My, my sheep know my voice and will answer not to another. Lord, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus that your power flows over this nation like never before. And let the true saints of God arise. Kalisha, arise. Rise into your purpose. Lisa, rise up. Wilson, rise up into your purpose. Rise up into the assignment of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, forget yesterday. Forget the past. Come into the truth of the word of God tonight. And for this, we won't stop to give you praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. I love you all. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sharing. Hallelujah. This time with us, we're going to close out now. You continue to pray. Heather, thank you for seeing you. Thank you for all of you who are here. My God, it's been an awesome time. Look out and listen out for more kingdom teaching. We're going to be doing more kingdom teaching and training over the next few weeks. I'm going to dive into the word of God. We're not going to be playing with the word. Hallelujah. I am coming at us real. Get your Bibles and your books and your pens next time. Continue to share this tonight. Uh, the power of God is still going to uh, touch people's lives. Go over this. Re-listen to this a few times. You're going to have to get it in your spirit a few times. We had to go through a lot tonight, but it's going to take a few sessions to get through this. We love you. I speak the blessing and favor and grace of the Lord upon you. Thank you again for joining us tonight. God bless you. Continue to pray. Take another hour tonight, many of you. Don't just go into the TV. Don't go into the room. Stay where you are and just worship the Lord and surrender your hearts to the Lord. Give him your all. Talk to him about some things. He is a loving and faithful Lord and King, and he desires to bless you. Amen. I guarantee you over the next few months, you're going to see a turnaround in your life. Stay tuned, and I'm going to give you all the keys and tips that I've learned that made me free in Christ. And I'm still walking in freedom with my family, my wife. God bless you, my darling wife. Shalewa is on here. We love you. God bless you. Thank you for praying and giving us this time to minister this word. She and I love you very much. Uh, we bless God for you. Our family loves you. Uh, ministry of Kingdom Apostolic Ministry loves you all very much. Go to powerandglorytv.tv to hear more about this. God bless you. We love you. Bishop Thomas, I see you. God bless you. We got to go. I know you're coming on. Many of you coming on. Continue to pray. 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 
Continue to pray. Continue to pray. God bless you in Jesus' name. And let the kingdom of God rule and reign in your heart and your mind. Because according to Luke 21, the kingdom of God is within you. And I want to add to that. The kingdom of God is in you through the Holy Spirit. Wherever you go tonight, tomorrow, you represent the kingdom of Jesus Christ just by your presence. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.